What are you doing today? Now you know I want to see you on your birthday. When he's the queen, Cain is the rook. Drew is the knight, Blaine is the bishop. And they're running shit. I'm leaning on you now, D. Get Episode four polarized a lot of people. People are trying to say that this show compares to Empire. And ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't. The story and the writing in this is far superior than Empire. And if you don't like the LGBTQ, just watch something else. I heard y'all make those same claims about the shy. You kept watching. And I think the writing in this show is a little bit more in-depth than what it is in the shy. So you're going to keep watching and watch and enjoy. This is going to be my trailer review for episode five, the last episode before they take that damn hiatus they take every year and don't come back to damn the end of January. And that's going to be way after we got a new president. If you're finding me for the first time, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so when I drop videos, you get them. Also, follow me on Instagram and follow me and Larry Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night live. We do take fan theories and we make videos. Last week, we did a fan theory and I want to amend that fan theory a little bit and I will do that at the end of this trailer. But for now, let's finish watching the rest of the trailer and then we'll piece it together. It's Rico alone and get me some information. This is just like your father. I got us now. I know y'all up to something, huh? I can shut down the whole thing. First clip, nothing special. Tasha from jail on her burner phone, calling Tariq, saying she wants to see him on his birthday. I don't think he's going to be able to make it happen. Tariq is juggling too much, and you see him on his phone, I guess, talking to her. He probably ain't going to be able to see her on the birthday. And then we see... Oh, Sugar Cane, telling somebody, possibly Tariq, possibly a member of his own family. Um, leave me comments on who you think he's telling. It could be Tariq, but eventually we see Reek in the van, in the truck with him. So I don't think that that is him, but we'll see. Then we see Tariq, and this is the most um, groundbreaking part of the trailer, probably for the whole season. Reek is doing chess and I don't think he's playing anybody. It looks like he's just got the chess board up mapping his own strategy. Wouldn't it be great if on the other side of that table it was Effie? But when you play chess, each piece is worth specific points. Now let's point out who he's doing it by order. And I know how to play chess. I learned as a kid and I would encourage everyone to learn how to play chess or teach your kids. It's a great thinking person's game. So he's highlighted Monet as the most valuable piece, which is the queen, which equals nine points. Then he says, the rook is Cain, which is five points. Then he highlights Drew as a knight, which is three points, and Diana as a bishop, which is three points. And we had a discussion on the live show about who was going to double cross the other one first. And it looks like Tariq is already putting a plan in place to double cross these individuals, which means if he takes them out, who's going to be a supplier? And I also think it's funny that he's figured out the chain of command and who's the most valuable pieces on this board really, really quick, which just shows you how much more he's like Ghost. And then we see Monet looks like she's talking to Tariq. And then we see Tariq in the truck with Kane. And who are they observing? Because they're looking at somebody with some intense eyes. And that's pretty much Tariq going through who the individual parts of this piece are. And then you see them end with him talking to his boy, Brayden, which I think they're probably talking about something else other than the pieces of the chessboard and their value. But we'll see. Leave me comments on what you think is going on with that. Then we see old Rico Suave looking on the outside of a door, and then they show us Monet looking through the inside of the door, looking out. Now, did they have a squabble? Did she just officially break up with him? Because if you look at the pattern, it's her door. It's the same pattern. It's just that one person's on the outside, the other one is on the end, and Rico Suave is leaving. And as Larry said, as we see Monet talking to Diana, she has told Diana, you got to use what you got to get what you want. 
Players Club line. And she is telling her daughter, look, I need you to get Tariq alone, in essence, get him in a bedroom, and get everything you can out of him. Now, do we think Reek is going to be stupid enough to fall for this when he's already mapping a plan? No. He already knows that Monet is trying to spy on him and learn what he's up to. And we see Diana at the party, see Tariq walking through the party, and he's talking to Diana, and guess who walks up? Oh, Lauren. Boy, I'm telling y'all, somebody in that Tariq quadrangle is going to be collateral damage. And right now, Tariq is having... Secret lover problems. Because he's got the school girl, then he's got the street girl, and then he's got the professor. Somebody is going to get hurt in this situation. And they show him walking off with Lauren, leaving Diana standing there. Now, folks... How is Diana going to turn out? Is she going to let her heart run with this or she's going to do the bidding of Monet? I don't think her heart is really into the game. And she could wind up being like Riley, you know, being stuck. You know, she really is probably going to let her heart lead her instead of letting what Monet wants to do lead her. And I think that it might turn out that they might wind up double crossing Monet. Then we see Tasha in jail saying that she's still leading things. Then we see Tariq in the alley looking pretty, pretty dejected. You know, he's putting his hand on his head like something has done happened. And we see Tasha with an intense look on her face talking on the phone. Then we finally see Cooper Sacks and Tariq meet up. And with us knowing just how much of an F up Cooper Sacks is, what could Tariq be telling him? Is Tariq basically saying, look, I know you got somebody telling me. Is Cooper Sacks revealing that he knows Tariq is back in the drug game? Or are they basically talking about what's going to happen at this trial? We'll see. Leave me your comments. Then we see old Meth McClain talking to Tasha, basically telling her, your ass ain't getting back on that stand. You ain't got a chance in hell. And then we see Kane still telling somebody, looking intently. And I think that there's about to be a complete breakup with this Tejada family, and Tariq is going to be the catalyst. We see Method Man walking into a home saying, what the hell is going on in here? Now, ladies and gentlemen, they mentioned his wife in this last episode when he was messing around with Paula, his investigator. Could this be his home? Could they be showing the situation he's got going on in his home? Because we know he's the kind of lawyer... They're kind of replacing Proctor's character with Method Man, putting a different spin on it. And for those of you that don't like or have issues with the fact that they are connecting the old power scenarios with this, just get over yourself. Because that's exactly what they're doing with new characters and a different story. And why would you break something that everybody loves? You're just making the story go on and you're continuing to bring the intrigue. Then we see Cooper Sacks talking about he knows how to bust up whatever they got going on, and he's going to end McLean's case. And then we see Tasha again looking spooked in jail, and it's only a matter of time before that warden gets on to Tasha. Y'all heard it on this channel first. That warden has got something in for Tasha. Not the warden, excuse me, the um, officer that works in there that's kind of the lead officer. She's got something in for Tasha, and I guess we'll see when they come back from their long break. Then we see Monet looking as though she's talking to Tariq. And then we see Reek staring in the mirror, which is another homage to Ghost always looking in those mirrors because they are putting the spirit of Ghost in Tariq. And that's pretty much it for the episode 5 trailer review. Please leave me your comments about what you think. And now I want to finish off on a fan theory that we did live on the air where the fan said he thought that Effie would come back and that Effie's brother was Lorenzo Tejada. I'm going to amend that because I didn't have a chance to check that live. But Effie's brother, she said, was killed. And maybe to amend this, my theory with the fan plus other fans, it could be that Lorenzo Tejada is not Effie's brother. But it could be that Lorenzo Tejada is Effie's father. 
and he had her with a side piece and kept Effie a secret this whole entire time. And there are other parts to that story we can piece together later on, but I wanted to go ahead and throw that part on out there, and you fans leave me all your comments. That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like my video. Please comment, subscribe, get yourself that life game. Be sure to follow me and Larry Monday, Wednesday, and Friday night as we go live and we take fan theories. We make videos with them right there on the spot. And when you have theories and you want to leave me your theories, be sure to follow me on Instagram. Drop me your comments. And also every now and then I put pictures of the newborn baby up there as well. And until that next sexy as hell video, I'll see you.